The holidays are right around the corner and one of the most popular handmade gifts is a cutting board because they're beautiful, easy to make and functional. But you can make them even more functional by making a juice groove that goes around the whole edge to prevent spills on your countertop. So today I'm going to go over a few methods to make this super useful juice groove. To do these demos, I'll need some cutting boards. And I found this teak project panel at my local big box store for around $50. And I'm going to be able to make five cutting boards out of this. That is around $10 a board. And that's not bad at all for not having to joint, plane, glue up, sand, or any of that. So I'm just gonna cut this thing up and then I'll start making some juice grooves. For the first method, I'll just use some simple scraps. But first, let's talk router bits. You're going to need a core box bit, and this is what's going to leave the rounded profile of the juice groove. Typically, you would use half inch, five eighths, or three quarters to get the size juice groove that you want. That's just a matter of preference. The only thing to take into consideration here is the shank size. Make sure you're getting the correct size shank for the router that you have. I'm going to use this half inch core box bit that has a quarter inch shank that goes into my trim router. All right, the premise behind this is that we're going to make a fence that goes all the way around the board. Now it doesn't matter how long these pieces are because you can offset them so that they fit around each other. They just need to be tall enough so that a router can run along the edge of them. But if I just set it up like this, the juice groove is going to be like right over there, which is way too far from the edge of the board. So what I need to do is make a spacer so that these boards are going to sit further back and the juice groove will be closer to the edge. Now, how far away from the edge? That is going to be a personal preference thing. For this board, I am thinking that around 3 8 seems about right. Like the edge of it will be 3 8 away and then a, a half inch groove. I think that looks good. Now, to get the exact size of the spacer that I need, I'll just take my router and line it up so that the edge of the bit is lined up with that mark I made. And I'll bring over that fence remove the router, then measure the distance between the edge of the board and the edge of that fence. This one seems like it's an inch and three eighths. I cut some scraps to that measurement and now it's ready to go. All I'm going to do here is use some double-sided tape to hold everything down, but you can also screw everything down to your workbench or screw everything down to a scrap piece of MDF or plywood. You may notice the spacer pieces are not the full length and width of the board. They don't need to be, they're just creating that space. You do have to make sure that they are lower than the board. A few things to take note before cutting. The direction that you want to rotate along these fences is from left to right. So that's going to be clockwise within these fences, and that's because of the rotation of the bit. So you're going to be going against the rotation, which is going to pull the router in towards the fence, and it'll make sure that you're cutting a straight line. Also, notice how the base plate on my router has a circle side and a square side. I'm going to make sure that that circle part is always touching the fences. So I'm going to be rotating my router as I go. The trick here is to do this in multiple passes. So the first pass, I just set the bit so it's barely poking out the bottom of the base plate, and then I make the cut. I don't even use a plunge base for this because I could just tilt my router to start the cut, and it works totally fine like this. I just go slowly and rotate around the whole fence, making sure to rotate the router so that the same side of the round part of that base plate is always touching the fence. As far as how deep the juice groove should be, that's also a matter of personal preference. <laughs> you just kind of keep going until it looks good to your eye. And once you get to where it's like, you think it's there, then just take off one final tiny little pass and that will clean up any burn marks if you have any. 
This is about as simple as it gets, and it works great for one-off projects, but if you plan on batching out boards, or you know you wanna build a lot of boards in the future, it might make more sense to make a more permanent jig. So let's do that now. I cut some plywood strips to about an inch and a half wide, and then cut them to length. I figured I want to make this as big as possible so it will fit the biggest size cutting board that I would make. But then I realized I don't really make square cutting boards, I usually make rectangles, so two of these pieces can be cut shorter. Now I have to figure out the spacer piece and I'll do it a little differently than the first board. So the first board I did 3 eighths from the edge because it's a very small board and it's also a small groove. But typically I don't make boards this small, I make larger boards and 3 quarters from the edge is usually where I like to do it. So I'll mark 3 quarters. Then I did a similar situation as before and lined up the edge of the bit with that mark then put the fence next to the router and move the router away. And of course you could do math, but why do math when you could do it like this, <laughs> all right? Now the difference here is that I'm going to measure from the edge of the board to the opposite edge of the fence. So I want to include the thickness of the fence and that ends up being an inch and five eighths for me and my router base. So I ripped some more strips of plywood to that thickness. The length of the spacers are not going to be the same as the fences because there needs to be room for them to move and adjust to different sizes. So the fence is gonna overlap on top of the spacers and when you line everything up, you can get the correct length of that spacer based on the overlap. I just find this way easier than doing math, but you do you. Using the marks, I cut the spacers to size, so now when the fence piece is lined up on the end of the spacer piece, it's overlapping the spacer piece that's next to it, and there's enough room on the other side for the other fence to go, and this is how it will be able to adjust. The fences will lock in place with a bolt, so I made some quarter inch slots on all the fences using a plunge cut at the router table, which could also be done with the trim router and an edge guide as well. Now the fences can be glued to the bottom of the spacers. And I like to set up jigs whenever I'm gluing multiple parts so that it just makes it easy to line everything up. So I know that one side is perfectly flush on both of the pieces and that the edges are flush with each other. So I use glue and brads just to tack it in temporarily. And then I came back with some screws to really close those pieces in since, I don't know if you noticed before, but this plywood was a little bit, uh, um, the bendy. The bolts will lock into the fences using threaded inserts. So to get the correct location of these inserts, I just put a quarter inch Forstner bit through the slot and made a mark. Now I can use that point to drill out holes for the threaded inserts. The jig is basically done now. All you would need to do to use it would be to find these knobs that have threads in them, put it through the slot, then lock it down to the perpendicular fence through the threaded insert. Only problem right now is that I only have two of these knobs. So there's a few ways I could go about doing this. I think I'm just going to make my own knobs. I've done this a few different ways in the past, like when I made these custom knobs that just go over bolts on one of my router jigs. Or on my portable workbench, I used hanger bolts to lock some knobs down. That way you don't even have to use the threaded inserts. But for these, I just cut down some threaded rod to size. Then I use some thread locker to permanently attach them to some smaller knobs. Place the fences down so the overlapping part of the fence is on top of that spacer piece and loosely connect it all with the knobs. Now here is the cool part. This thing can adjust to any size. So let's take this larger board. All you have to do is adjust all the fences until it is encapsulating the board in the middle and then lock it down with the bolts or knobs. Now the cool thing about this also is that this board is now trapped inside here and it's not going to move around. All you need to do is clamp the jig down to your bench using the ledges from the spacers that are hanging down. This whole thing is nice and solid and sturdy. 
Now we can adjust this to boards of different sizes. Let's do a smaller board. And now an even bigger board. So simple, I love this. Same process as before, I do this in multiple passes to get the best results. First pass is always very shallow and then I just keep going until it looks good to me. And then one final very, very, very shallow pass. The way that I built this jig is that the juice groove is going to start three quarter inches from the edge if I'm using a half inch bit but this is also adjustable. If I want the juice groove to start closer to the edge, just like my first board that I made, all I need to do is put some spacers in between the fence and the board, and that will bring the bit closer to the edge. Another thing you wanna be aware of is where the slot is going to lie in relation to your base plate. So you want to make sure that it's high enough so that the base plate is never going to run into that slot, no matter what thickness board you put in here. So figure the uh, boards that you want to make, like the sizes that you like to make, how thick they are, and then make the slot accordingly. I like that this jig can be taken apart and stored away in pieces, so it doesn't take up so much room in your shop. All right, moving on to another method, using a template in the middle of the board. This one I'm going to measure out and mark a little bit differently. So I want the uh, juice groove to start a half inch from the edge on this board. That just seems right for this size. And I'm using a half inch bit. So I want to mark from the center of that half inch bit. So I'm going to add a quarter inch to that half inch from the edge. So I'll mark three quarter inches around the whole perimeter of the board. Now I want to get the exact distance from that line that I just marked to the edge of the router base plate. So to do that, I put a V groove bit into my router so that I can place that point directly over the line I just made. Now I put a square up against the edge of the router base plate remove the router and strike a line on the edge of the square. Then I repeat the process for the other three sides. Now I just need to measure the distance between the lines on both sides and cut a piece of MDF or plywood or whatever to that measurement and use that as my template. I secured it to the board with double-sided tape, making sure that I was using those lines that I marked out before as a reference for where to put it. And this is going to be a little bit different than the other ones because with the fence that goes around the board, like I did before, I went clockwise. This time I'm going to go counterclockwise because you always want to go left to right along a fence. And because this fence or this template is on the middle of the board, the router is going to be going counterclockwise around to make the juice groove. The V groove bit that I put in the router before was only for centering the router over the middle of where I want the juice groove to go. So I made sure to swap out to the core box bit and then the same as before, you just take this in multiple passes. But as you can see, this already looks different than the other two because this has a rounded corner where the other one where the fence was on the outside, it's more of a square corner. So this is a different look if you want to do this type of inside template. Just like the others, I do this in multiple passes and I always make sure to clean the dust or the chips that are on the board or the template because that would mess up with the accuracy of the juice groove. I know I said this about the first one, but it really doesn't get any simpler than this. But I just wanna try one more method. Um, it's something that I haven't done before and I just think that it will work, so let's see. Since it would be really difficult to go around a sharp square corner with an edge guide, I knocked off the corners of the bandsaw and then sanded them smooth. To do this, I'm going to use the edge guide on my six in one trim router jig. But I can't just use the edge guide alone because I'm going to be going around corners and that's just not really so easy to do with a straight edge guide. So I need to make 
a piece that's going to sit on top of that edge guide and that's going to allow me to follow the curve of the board. This piece just has a notch in it and I'll use double side tape to attach it to the fence on my jig. So I place the jig on the board and adjust the fence so that the bit is lined up to where I think it looks good that a juice groove would go. So right off the bat, this way was uh, the hardest out of all of them. And you can see that going around these corners was actually not so great. Oh, here was fine, but it was not so great. I'm going to try again and see uh, maybe hand positioning or something to be able to make this better. I'm gonna give up on this one for now because it looks horrible and it's really hard to control the router around the curves. Got me thinking about what I could do to make a jig to follow curves like that, like put like bearings on there or something. I don't know, I don't think it's worth it because the other methods work totally fine and are so easy. So I'm just not even going to put any more thought into this one. I couldn't let it go. I had to figure out a way. So I took that piece that had the notch in it and I drilled some holes in it. Now I'm gonna put some dowels into it. What I'm hoping here is that the two points of contact are always gonna stay on the edge, but then as I get around the curves, the curve of the dowel is going to go around the curve of the board. We shall see. First pass, not so great. I'm going to try to guess a different way to hold it. Okay, now I'm gonna give up. There is just too much of a risk that you're going to not turn at the correct radius or turn at the right time. Like if you go super, super, super slow, you can achieve a good radius, but there's just too much risk for failure. And the other ways just work so much better. It was worth a shot though. Last time that I made a video with a cutting board, I was using the Shaper Origin to create some features. And some people asked me, how come I didn't use the Origin to make the juice groove? Well, I've actually done that in the past with some other boards. I made this jig that can fit the cutting boards and I just need to put shims underneath it to lift it up and then I can use my origin to make the juice groove. The only problem with this is that I then have to go and design the juice groove in the computer in, or, or on whatever, on the phone or whatever, in order to get it done. And I just think this way takes a lot longer than using any of those fences or templates. Now that all these juice grooves are made, let's put a cutting board to use with this week's sponsor, Green Chef. Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic meal kit company with options for every lifestyle. Whether you eat keto and paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, or gluten-free, you can get pre-portioned, easy to follow recipes delivered right to your door. I've been using Green Chef for over a year now, and my favorite thing about it is the variety of foods I would never think to make on a weeknight, like this meal I'm making. It's like a chicken salad, but the chicken is replaced with chickpeas. My mind was blown, it's genius. Green Chef now offers even more variety and flexibility than ever before with double the choices. You can choose from 24 recipes weekly with the option to mix and match meals from different preferences like vegan one day and keto the next. This is great if members of your house eat differently. These chef crafted recipes feature farm fresh produce and organic sustainably sourced ingredients. Best part, they include pre-made and pre-measured sauces, dressings, and spices, so you get more chef curated flavor in less time. It took me no time at all to make this wholesome and delicious meal, and I love knowing that I can eat well without the need to take too much time out of my day. I can't wait till my next box arrives. If you want to try out Green Chef for yourself, use the code 3x3CUSTOM135 to get $135 off across five boxes plus free shipping on your first box. Go to greenchef.com for more details. Once again, head on over to greenchef.com and use the code 3x3CUSTOM135 to get 
and $35 off across five boxes, plus free shipping on your first box. Thanks, Green Chef. So making a juice groove is not difficult at all. It's just a matter of making a fence or a template and rotating the router in the correct direction. There's multiple ways to get it done and all of them are fine, except I guess for the edge guide. It's just not worth bothering with like having to focus so much on going around the curves if the other methods work so much better. I love that I have a permanent jig now for juice grooves on any future cutting boards that I'm going to make, but I do also really love how it looks when you put the template on the inside. I like the curved um, uh, shape on it. I would probably knock down the corners on here also, but this is easier to sand and clean. I really like how this looks. I hope this was helpful for anyone who wants to make cutting boards this holiday season. Thank you to Green Chef for sponsoring this video and thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. I wanna double check if that's really a half inch. Ooh, I eyeballed that half inch, like, on the money. <laughs> and this is going to be able to adjust. I thought that was a spider. <laughs> Ow.